you, Miss Emily Field, who is my nutrition coach. I love working with her. And when she asked for um, the, when she asked, um, you know, about, hey, I've got this, um, you know, some tips to make your meal planning easier, I said, yes, absolutely, let's do it. So um, thank you so much, Emily. Can you give us um, a brief, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, yeah, how, um, how this all started? Yeah, well, I am a registered dietitian and I felt like uh, when I was first getting into practice that um, I, you know, maybe just like you, when you're working with your clients around flexible dieting, it can be uh, one of the most helpful tools because it kind of gives people some rails to stay in and it also helps keep your metabolism healthy and fast um, and supports your energy. Um, I mean, it's no secret that we're both huge fans of flexible dieting and if it fits your macros. But the problem is that um, a lot of people can't fold it into their diet or into their day um, sustainably. They can't do it in a way that feels right and it just never kind of comes together. And that's really frustrating for me because I know how powerful the tool can be when it's used properly and when you can do it cons consistently. So um, I developed um, a course called Macros Made Easy in order for to take your prescription macros and um, you know get all those questions answered that you have in the beginning like how do you meal plan around them or how do you best log this that or this if it doesn't have a label or how do you track alcohol um, lots of different things like that so um, I am super passionate about helping people develop the skill of macro tracking so that you can see and reap the benefits that we know um, are possible with it Great, great, awesome. Well, so so let's dive in to um, some common questions. Um, one of the um, most common questions I get is, um, okay, I have these numbers, but I'm also feeding my family at dinner time. So mm -hmm. how do I figure out um, a recipe, or how do I decide, you know, what we're cooking for the family that I can eat those same things without having to make a completely separate meal? Yeah, because we, you know, I, I work with head of households just like you do, and it's so true. We're making um, multiple meals, or we're trying to avoid making multiple meals, some that fit our macros and those that fit the taste of our family. So one of my first tips that I'll share is about kind of having a running list of manipulatable meals that you can make for your family. So what do I mean by manipulatable meals? I just simply mean are they recipes that you could alter the protein, fat, or carb content in order to fit your needs while also not throwing off the entire recipe and making it taste uh, completely different? Mm -hmm. So I know that you probably have this in your head, um, just a running list of like maybe five or seven meals at, at any given point you could throw together based on like whatever's in your house or whatever's common to your fridge and your pantry. So I would just encourage you to make sure that those meals are easily manipulatable. Um, so what I mean is by a few simple tweaks, we're making it a high carb meal or with a few simple tweaks, we're making it a low carb meal. And I usually use the example of a stir fry and I'm sure this is probably not uncommon for your group as well, but Let's just say you have um, your ground meat, whatever that might be, that's your protein, you're cooking it in some um, oil, that's your fat, um, and then it's a particularly high carb day, so you're pairing it with rice, and the rest of your family can also eat it with rice or with tortillas or something like that, whatever they wish. But let's just say it's a particularly low carb day or you've already eaten a lot of your carbs for the day and you want to make it low carb, but you don't want to make a totally different meal for your family. Um, maybe you're pairing it instead of rice, maybe you're pairing it with low, uh, like cauliflower rice. That's a very low carb option. It doesn't really change the taste of the entire recipe. Um, or maybe you're throwing the meat and the veggies or whatever stir fry that you've made on top of a bed of lettuce. So again, you're not changing the entire thing and you're still able to kind of present that meal for your entire family, um, but it fits your macros at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, really good idea. Just changing kind of the side dish mm -hmm. that goes with it um, mm -hmm. and keeping, yeah, keeping that, that main portion or the main protein source um, the same. That's, that's easy to deal with. And then to like, it's a struggle to get Mia to eat vegetables. So if like, 
sometimes she's just a meat and potatoes girl and that's just, mm-hmm. her. it works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, like in that instance, you're not really making a totally different dish for her. You're just, um, everything's kind of kept separate and, um, you can dish, she can dish or you can dish whatever you uh, want for her. <laughs> so, um, so another question, um, that I commonly, um, receive is, um, because, the, because the chisel program is all about building muscle, we increase protein um, pretty significantly about four to five days out of the week. Mm. And so um, a, a lot of my clients struggle to hit that protein intake, um, you know, in the first couple of weeks, it might take them some time. So yeah. what are some, um, some easy ways to get protein in um, without, you know, eating six ounces of ground beef. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think in the beginning, it really is about kind of reminding yourself what has protein. So instead of like, um, instead of like trying to willy nilly go about your day with a clean slate of macros to eat, um, and just hoping that you get there by the end of the day, I recommend that you maybe even post something on your fridge, something that you're going to see every day with some common high protein items. So that is obviously all of your meat, fish, and poultry, but then your high, um, high protein dairy products, um, obviously supplements like protein bars and protein powder. Um, but you have the group support and I would love, you know, especially when I run groups, I love bouncing ideas off of other people and saying like, well, how do you use protein powder in a creative way? Or, you know, does anybody have any recipes for high protein muffins or pancakes or, you know, anything like that? So I think definitely utilizing the group, um, structure that you have already could be one way that you can kind of, um, start to ease into that high protein amount. But the other thing that I, I recommend for people is, to keep, um, uh, to, to take their total protein amount for the whole day and divide it by however many meals they want to have that day. So this is called checkpoint macros. And this is actually one of the most helpful things I did in the beginning to help me hit my macros on target every single day. So let's say your number is up somewhere in the range of like 140. And I like to have three meals a day. So I'll take 140 and divide it by three meals a day. That gives me about 46 grams per meal. So that means that if I don't hit around 40 to 46 in meal one, I know that I'm going to be behind at the end of the day. And I don't want to be catching up on an eight ounce steak or like a 10 ounce no, steak or something awful. Like that. <laughs> So I know that everybody's been there, especially in the beginning, but using checkpoint macros can be a really helpful tool. So you can kind of start to understand where you need to be. Um, by meal one, by meal two, and then eventually by meal three in order to stay on target. And a lot of times it just means that it's not about eating six ounces of chicken. It's about having chicken and then maybe an afternoon snack of Greek yogurt. Um, Maybe you're throwing in some chia seeds or hemp seeds to add more protein to that serving. Um, Maybe you're using a a high protein ice cream to kind of get there too. So lots of different things that you can do, but breaking up into small chunks can be really helpful. Awesome. Um, okay. So my other question is, um, running out of a macro early in the day. I Mm -hmm. see this all the time. I've already hit my fats for the day. I've already hit my carbs for the day. What do I do? (laughs) Well, that checkpoint macro thing comes in really handy for this as well, because it kind of puts rails on how much maybe the top end of a macro. So if you only have, let's say 50 grams of fat to work with, you know, you're not going to want to blow 30 of them on breakfast because then you're going to have a pretty bland lunch or dinner. So I would encourage you to do that checkpoint macro, um, tip with every single one of your macros. So take your total protein, total fat and total carb and divide by how many meals a day you want to have. And let that be a guide for you to form a meal that's a little bit more moderate in each of those portions instead of having a super high carb or super high fat and blowing your totals out of the water by the end of the day. Perfect. Perfect. So what else can you share for a beginner? Somebody who this is their first time to start tracking. um, They've got their numbers. Mm -hmm. What do they do next? Well, I really think that a lot of people are missing out on how to use MyFitnessPal better or how to make MyFitnessPal work for them. So I highly encourage you to think about the way you eat right now. Maybe you have a couple recipes that are super go-to um, and you want to, I would, I would upload them into my fitness pal. So I, I don't want you to like 
completely change the way that you're eating all of a sudden now that you have uh, macros. I want you to fit the foods that you already like to have and that are easy for your family to make and everybody likes. I want you to be able to fold that into your um, life right now. Just put rails on it as far as macros. So one thing that I encourage people to do in the very beginning is to log common meals that they like to have. So maybe that's like your favorite chili or an egg bake or it's soup season now. I'm in Minnesota. I'm wearing a hat. Like we're <laughs> eating all of the warm foods right now. So it's maybe it's like uploading um, some of your favorite recipes into the app using the um, phone or using your desktop. And I think it's easier to do it on the desktop as a beginner, but you can just simply throw in um, all the ingredients and then divide by the yield. And the yield being how many servings do you usually get out of it? Do you usually get four servings? Do you usually get five? Um, you know, something like that. Do you usually pre portion into small containers? Um, and then you can just log, you know, whatever that common portion is that you eat across the week. Um, or divide that full recipe in two or three and then log that across the week. That can make it really easy. Yeah, um, that's a that's a really good idea to think in terms of what they're already mm -hmm. eating on a weekly basis or on a, even, you know, on a daily basis and making that fit within their numbers first and then kind of working out. Yeah, because I think when we sign up with a coach, we're in this mindset of like turning a new leaf. We're like doing everything different. And that can feel really overwhelming. You're not only learning a new skill of macro tracking, but you're trying to like eat new foods to fit these macros. But really you have an arsenal of, of knowledge already about what works for your family and what you love to eat. So just make simple tweaks to the things that you already like. And I use the example of like Chipotle a lot of times. So you were used to having a Chipotle order before working with Sarah or before working with Emily. And now after your macro tracking, all you're doing is just making a few simple tweaks to maybe leave off the guac or to add cheese or to get um, rice instead of beans or something like that and that you're just simple swaps like that to help you hit maybe your checkpoint macros or maybe you hit your full macros for the day um you know but not but not changing where you eat out does that make sense oh yeah yeah definitely and and man chipotle is one of the best places for people who track yeah because absolutely there's so many different ways that you can configure your bowl and or your mm -hmm. burrito whatever and still mm -hmm. make, it, make it fit within your day you might mm -hmm. not be getting all the bells and whistles but <laughs> yeah yeah and I, of course it's not a perfect science and i always want to remind people that you know, you tracking has a ton of errors and, you know, you have a different digestion than I do. So maybe you're not even absorbing the same nutrients that my fitness pal says or even in the food. Uh, your guess to like putting, you know, giving somebody macros is, is a guess in it of itself. We don't actually know how many calories somebody's burning in a workout or what you need, but even all of this inaccuracy and all this like kind of guesswork, I always like to remind people that it still works. Like under all of these, like, crazy circumstances of things that could go wrong and how ex not exact the science is, it still works. You're still going to achieve the body composition results that you're looking for. You're still going to sculpt lean, strong muscle. You're still going to lose body fat, even in this imperfect system. So I think that um, that's one thing I like to tell new clients too, because they think people can get really bent out of shape around the how exact can you be and you know how many grams of this and that and how, how close do you have to be to your totals and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what about um, dining out? Just what, you know, we can choose restaurants that offer mm -hmm. their macros, or, you know, or their nutrition facts on their menu or on their websites. But mm -hmm. um, what tips do you have for places that maybe don't or um, <laughs> should yeah. order two burgers? I kind of like to think about it on a spectrum. So if you're, let's just say um, the, on the very one end of the spectrum, it's like you're competing in a bodybuilding show and it's absolutely important that you are as exact and you know, as um, precise as possible when tracking your macro. So that person might not eat out or they'll eat out at a place that they know they absolutely know the macros. They may even bring their scale to the restaurant. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum is somebody that's like, I do things really well 90% of the time and I just want to go enjoy time with my friends and eat whatever I want. I think most of our clients are kind of somewhere in the middle where they're like, I'm definitely not bringing my scale, but I don't want to blow my progress out of the water. So I usually like to... Um, kind of frame it like that for somebody. So um, they have to decide how exact they want to be. So either they're choosing a restaurant 
like you said, that has the macro counts online and they're pre-logging that food into their diary and then eating around it for the rest of the day, um, kind of accounting for that and putting that place mark and bookmark in their diary already. Um, or you're choosing foods that you can easily recognize and you can kind of estimate. So um, I teach people how to estimate macros using portion sizes and like a comparing to the size and like the size of their palm or like maybe that your thumb size portion. What does that look like in fat grams or what does this look like in, in protein grams? So that's something that you could teach. Um, and I mean, I guess the, the only other thing is, is that you're going to, um, like for somebody that's trying to be, um, not so exact and kind of like loosely track and go out and enjoy themselves would just be that you pick something, um, from my fitness pal that looks like something on the menu. So even if you don't have the macro counts, maybe it's a ma and pa restaurant and they don't have a big enough menu to afford them the nutrition packs online, just find something that is like that at another restaurant. And essentially I love the, the, I love bookmarking my entries before I eat them because it helps me stay on track before I even eat that meal. I've like already allowed that, that those macro counts for my dinner, for example. So I know I need to eat a very protein rich breakfast and a like a lower fat lunch in order to account for all the yummy macros I'm going to have at dinner. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that's a good, a good point too, that, um, that a lot of times too, that we're at the mercy of the restaurant as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can track or we can, you know, base it off of what they have listed on their website, you know, and, and just knowing going in that it's loosely around mm -hmm. that amount. So, mm -hmm. don't you know, freak out about if you, if you weigh yourself every day or whatever. Yeah. Like, I know you kind of blew up on the day after yeah. that happens. Your weight's going to be up. Like just, just <laughs> yeah. know your weight's going to be up after a restaurant meal. Exactly. I just think that like when it comes to eating out or we have to remember that nutrition and food in general is not just a health thing. It's a social and cultural and, you know, a lot of things are wrapped up in food and I would hate for you to develop this like um, I don't know, it's almost a disorder, like mm -hmm. to think that you can't eat out um, because, uh, because you're flexible dieting. So I usually tell clients like the practical stuff is get a workout in that day, you know, eat a little bit lighter, save your fun macros, the fat and the carbs for your meal eaten out and don't weigh yourself the next day because you're going to like exactly. freak out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I always tell clients like don't weigh yourself after leg day. Maybe or vacation. Like days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After vacations and after like birthdays, holidays. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So yeah. These are great, great tips. So tell us how we can connect connect with you and how we can learn more about planning meal planning around mm -hmm. our numbers. So what I'll do is I will definitely summarize these tips in a freebie. So you can download that. You can read them. Um, if you're more of a visual learner or a reader, then you are an auditory learner. Um, so I'll definitely link that and you can throw it in your emails or wherever, but you can reach me on Instagram at Emily field RD, or you can see my website at emilyfieldrd.com. I love using Instagram specifically stories to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at the course that I'm making and like the client wins that I have much like you. I love celebrating my clients and putting them at the forefront of my Instagram. So you can see more of that there. But again, I am all about making macro tracking a sustainable practice and folding it into your life um, so that you can do it consistently and you can see those results so quickly. And that's why I developed the macros made easy course. And it's, um, I'm actually launching another round on November 27th. So if any of your ladies want this kind of like rubber hits the road sort of information on macro tra tracking and meal planning, they'd be a great fit for that program. It runs alongside any other coaches program. So if you've got boot camps going on, it's not at all a competition with that. You're just using the macros that Sarah provides and learning how to kind of achieve them better I and more accurately yeah. and um, you'll be far more successful on a program that Sarah provides is kind of what I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's a great way too for, um, for the women that are just starting out with tracking that, mm -hmm. you know, 
I, I give numbers and I have some recipes, but that's stuff that like I like to eat. So what if it's yeah. something that, you know, that, that not everybody. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's a, that's a great, great option. And um, so I'm going to um, post the recording and then I will also um, post how to connect with you mm-hmm. um, via email and in our group pages. Um, and then, yeah, we can, we can go from there. Sounds great, Sarah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning. I really appreciate it. Stay warm. Here I am. Tank top. I know. (laughs) Jealous. Texas, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. (laughs) All right, girl. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.